One of my earliest introductions to the horror genre was Joe Dante's 1984 classic, Gremlins. To this day, Gremlins is still one of my favorite films. It's become part of my Christmas tradition to watch it every December. For me, Christmas ain't Christmas till Corey Feldman creates the ultimate safety violation, recklessly cutting a string of Christmas lights with a pair of scissors. <laughs> Its sequel, The New Batch, has got to be one of the goddamn craziest sequels ever made. It's complete lunacy that deserves to be included in the discussion of greatest sequels of all time. Recently, HBO Max, oh, I'm sorry, Max, clearly the better name, released a 10-episode animated prequel to Gremlins titled Gremlins. Secrets of the Mogwai. This is something that's been in the works for a while. Announced back in 2020, Secrets of the Mogwai tells the story of how Gizmo came to meet Sam Wing, also known as the Chinatown Shopkeeper from the original films. The series was developed by Zay Chun, with Joe Dante acting as a creative consultant. The idea of this being a prequel was something I was a tad reluctant to at first, it just didn't seem like a franchise that needed one. But after watching it, I can confidently say that it was a wise decision on their part. The first thing that stands out about any animated project is the visuals. With Secrets of the Mogwai, you've got a computer animated show with a sort of cell shaded style, which results in something that looks very much like a painting or a children's storybook. It seemed an odd look for a gremlin show at first, but I think it looks quite nice and matches the show's tone pretty well for the most part. But I'm not gonna lie, there were times I couldn't help but think of League of Super Evil. I can't be the only one. However, despite the beautiful art style, there are occasional moments where the animation itself can look a bit stilted. Moments where I wish there was a bit more energy to it. But that's just me being super nitpicky considering this is a streaming show and not a theatrical release. I think we've all been spoiled by Across the Spider-Verse, let's be honest here. The main character of this show, Sam Wing, is a young, cautious boy who encounters a mogwai with his grandpa. When his grandpa is sucked into an orb and devoured by an evil wizard known as Riley Green, Sam and a young thief named Elle must team up to safely return Gizmo home before Green can capture the furry mogwai and gain his essence. Sam's character is very reminiscent of Bilbo Baggins from The Hobbit, with him being a reluctant child who forces himself into an exciting adventure. But hey, if you're gonna take inspiration from an adventure story, it may as well be The Hobbit. Elle, of course, is another major character in the show. She contradicts Sam in many ways, having grown up on the streets, learning to fend for herself. Now, there is more than one villain in the show, the others, of course, being the Gremlins, but Riley Green stands out as the sole human villain in the franchise. He's interesting in the sense that he's often portrayed as comedic, but still poses a threat. He's incompetent, but never goes full doofenshmirtz at any point. I think he adds a fun element to the show, although his backstory feels incredibly bare bones with his mother and father never having hugged him. Yet no matter how much power you collect, you'll never fill your aching void inside because you were, checks notes, never hugged as a child. Not even by your own mother. It just kind of comes out of nowhere and feels unnecessary as a backstory. He really doesn't need one. Secrets of the Mogwai lives up to its name as we get the chance to learn a little more about the Mogwai and how they came to be. Minor spoiler, but the idea of them being created by a god as a test for humanity actually makes quite a bit of sense. It's not just Mogwai and gods here, but other mystical creatures as well. There's a moment in the show in which our heroes travel to the spirit market, and there's just a ton of cool, colorful creature designs. There's also shape-shifting demons, and even zombies, referred to as the Jiangchi. Crapo's right! The talisman stops them! Okay, great. I slow them down. You pin the talisman on the Jiangchi. <laughs> the show rarely goes full-out horror, I say rarely, I'll get to the body horror stuff in a bit. But its inclusion of these things gives it a strong fantasy vibe that makes their adventures all the more exciting. At first, it takes a while for the ball to get rolling, but the more evil mogwai that are introduced, the better the show gets. I don't know what it is about gremlin shenanigans that brings me so much joy, just something about watching these little critters reveling in the destruction they cause is so much fun to watch. 
Ah, you wish to see the world, and I cannot tell what your people are doing to the Eiffel Tower, but it seems unpleasant. Yes. <laughs> There's even some unique gremlins like Madame Claw, the leader of the group. Much in the same way that Stripe and Mohawk were in the first two films, Madame Claw is also the only female gremlin in the franchise. Mr. Claw? Uh-uh, miss. Oh. With the obvious exception of the trans one from Gremlins 2. Could there be a female gremlin? Lipstick, boobies, bitch, you have me and little gremlin but JJ. I love it so much that it's not only in the movie, but it's definitely in the movie. George Takai Gremlin is also a lot of fun, being the only one capable of speaking clearly thanks to a solution he drank. This of course parallels the brain gremlin from the second film, the best gremlin. We want to be civilized. I mean, you take a look at this trail here. <laughs> now was that civilized? No, clearly not. Fun, but in no sense civilized. Although if there was one thing I could do without, it'd be the occasional George Takai, oh my, they snuck in there. Oh my. I know that's like his trademark and all, but that was old back in high school. Why are we still doing it? There is one element I took a bit of issue with when it came to the gremlins, in that the way in which they are animated doesn't feel quite as energetic as the puppets of the films. Like I said, it gets better when there's more of them, but at first they felt a bit too restrained for me. The fact that there is no pop culture references in this thing, with the exception of the oh my thing, is pretty commendable. They probably could have thrown them in if they wanted to, but they managed to keep all their goofy shenanigans pretty relevant with the times, the times being the 1920s. The voice cast here all does a terrific job. It's mostly made up of Asian actors, with a couple of exceptions. James Hong is great as usual, but he doesn't stick around very long, appearing only at the beginning and the end of the season. Which seems to be something I've noticed about him, that his roles are more often than not pretty minimal. But to be fair, the guy is in his 90s, maybe he just doesn't have the energy for it. Zach Galligan plays a henchman, so it's neat that he got a part in this. Gizmo is very much not voiced by Howie Mandel. Instead, he's voiced by AJ Locasio, who does just fine. I assume Howie Mandel would have done it, but he was probably too busy judging whatever it is he judges now. But it is strange to think that his last performance as Gizmo was for a Mountain Dew ad. Be careful. I literally bought this just because the commercial had gremlins in it. Don't ever tell yourself you're immune to propaganda because every time I tell myself I am, I go out and buy a sugar-free soda. As far as downsides to the show, besides some of the stuff I've mentioned, I think the show's biggest detriment is Sam Wing's parents who are two incredibly uninteresting characters that get way too much screen time. And then there's the radish kid who feels like he's introduced as one of our new main characters that will join the heroes on their journey, only to feel like he's kind of forgotten a few episodes later. It's weird, I didn't really understand his inclusion. The show also very much feels like something meant for kids. It's not breaking any new grounds in the writing department, I'll tell you that, but oddly enough there are also quite a few scenes of body horror here. It has a very Grimm's fairy tales vibe to it where a character can get a finger or a hand severed and there's no blood like it's Star Wars or some shit. I actually did like that aspect of it a lot, I'm not sure how kids will react to some of it, but if the original was a great introduction to horror, then I think this will be a great introduction to Gremlins. The fact that Secrets of the Mogwai feels very much geared towards kids does tend to hinder my enjoyment a bit, but it doesn't make it bad either. I think that most kids will like this. Thankfully, the first season of the show is pretty self-contained. I was worried it would end on a major cliffhanger after season 2 was announced a while back. I think in the age of streaming, we really need more seasons of shows that provide us a bit of closure. Do I recommend this show? Mainly to kids, but if you're a Gremlins fan like me, of course you'll have some fun with it. Although be prepared for the occasional frightening moment, I think most kids will be just fine with it, but if you know that it'll scare them, don't show it to them. 
Gremlins 3 is an idea that's been discussed so long that it feels strange to finally have some official Gremlins media release. I think the show is a nice meet in the middle sort of solution. It's cool getting to learn more about Mr. Wing in a way that won't upset fans either, although it does unfortunately make his death from Gremlins 2 all the more depressing. I would definitely watch a Gremlins 3 should it get made, I mean it seems inevitable at this point. But I also strongly believe that we do not need one. Although with the current state of Warner Brothers, who knows how long they'll retain the rights, they're probably going to throw it in the free pile at their going out of business sale. So yes, Gremlins Secrets of the Mogwai is a solid show, check it out if you want to. Thank you all for watching, and goodbye.